I'm gonna have to put a warning out, you can't make one. I made one, and this is just a water bottle and a food container, so it's not gonna cost you much at all. But when I put it out, all the hummingbirds were coming. Look, they're waiting in the back to come. This has been like a freeway of traffic of birds flowing to this one water fountain. This little house finch brought his mate. Look, this was just adorable. And the doves. Oh, yes, the doves. They can barely fit. But the hummingbirds continue to drink all day. They come to bathe. They come to get water. So the main thing I needed was water bottles. Well, that's easy. So I ended up making three. Look at the Orioles. Two of them taking a bath on one of those. And this has been a joy to sit and watch. They're lightweight. They're self-contained. Sit it on a table, a balcony in the garden, because they're so portable, you can move them anywhere you want. You can put the container in the shade and you put the solar panel, well, you can put that in the sun, of course. And so you can move around the fountain because it's got a long cord. Now you can run an electric pump on these if you prefer and you've got electricity, or you can buy the battery operated ones that work on a cell phone backup battery, a small power bank. Those work great too. They'll run for a few days. And of course, you're not going to run them at night. So you can just unplug it and bring it in. Whatever way works for you. And that's if you're in full shade and you don't have any sun for the solar fountains. This has been wonderful. They're food containers. They're free. You get them when you buy your groceries and you can't get anything safer than that. I'll show you a few different options on how you can decorate it if you want to. And then you make it whatever way you want. Let's go right in and let's get this going so you can get this made and get it out for your birds there too. So this is all you're gonna need for this water fountain, a water bottle and then some sort of container. I'm gonna use a sour cream container, a large type. We're gonna use both the bottom and the lid. Now the solar fountain kit we're gonna use will be the one that comes with the long cord. It's gonna have a panel and that super long cord so you just put the panel where you want and you'll have the small pump. Don't buy the round ones, it will not work for this at all. That's all you're gonna need. And the pump is gonna go in the bottle, but you'll see as we go, it's so easy to make. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take the label off, we don't need it. So just take your scissors, cut it off, and we're done with the label, toss it in the trash. Now the next thing we're going to do is cut the bottle. We're not gonna use a soldering iron for this at all. It will just be a scissors. Now see the line on the bottle? We're going to cut it on the line. Now if your bottle doesn't have a, a line there, don't worry about it, but cut it where the base and the bottle, both of them are the same size. In other words, if you put it together, it would be the same size. So don't cut it too close to the top of the bottle. Just drop it down when you cut it so it's both the same width or diameter or circumference. Okay, now we're going to make a hole on the bottom. Now, not on the very bottom, on the side on the bottom. That is where we're gonna sit our pump in. So you're gonna make a great big hole there. Don't worry if it's too big, it's okay. This is all just like supporting the pump. So with your scissors, get in there and just cut a big hole. Now with that big hole, your pump will slide in. See how it's gonna fit in? You'll see as we go. This is so easy. You're gonna love this. You're gonna make more than one. I did. Now the next thing we're gonna do is kind of take our scissors and push it in there and make a few more holes around the top of the bottle there, all the way around the sides. Now the reason we're doing that is when you sit this in there and it's filling with water, sometimes air pockets get into the bottle and it won't fill the bottle back up with water. It will fight with the pump as it's pumping. So if you make two, three, four holes, whatever you want, you know, small holes, just don't worry. There's no big deal on what size. The water will flow back into the bottle. We want that bottle full of water when it's in a container. So the water flows back and forth and the pump will pump really good. So just make some holes around there. Again, the size doesn't matter, just to make sure we have good water flow. And see how it's gonna sit in there? So it's not gonna drop in, it's just gonna sit on top of the bottle. Now, I also like using the cap of the bottle to hold and support the straw. You could do it without, but see how it's loose? Even if you use the tubing, if you decide to do that instead, it's still gonna be loose. Totally up to you. But what I do, because a lot of the water bottle caps are so light in plastic, real thin, I just put my scissors in there and I kind of eyeball it and cut a hole all the way around. And this way the straw will have a little more support 
and hold it all in place. It works really good, see? That's all there is to it. Look at that, isn't that simple? And that will support the straw that's gonna come up. You're making a bubbler and your pump will be on the bottom. That's all we need to do there. So we're basically done with this part. Now for the container. Again, you could use a bucket or any other container, but I'm recycling and I'm using food containers. Now we're not going to draw because we're gonna make a circle on the top there because the top on the opposite side will be our top, but the top here will not be. So you can do anything you want there. Kind of make an X and figure out where the center is. Again, I eyeball it, but you can measure it and get your measuring tape out and do it that way if you want. I don't worry about it if it's not perfect. Now I draw the circle to get an idea on the hole and it looked a little bit like it was off. So I'm gonna kind of cut it to the side to make sure it's a little bit more centered. Like I said, I don't measure. Not always, sometimes I do. So now you just cut all the way around. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a hole big enough, and don't worry if it's too big, to support the bottle. I actually made this the first time without a lid, and it was okay, but it kind of vibrated as it was pumping. And I thought, you know what? I am gonna use the lid, because that will keep the bottle from shaking back and forth as the water's pumping up and down. And it gives a little bit of a tray, and you know what? It looks neat. So I decided, yeah, that's why I like making one, sometimes stepping back and looking at it. You do that too when you're working on yours because you might find you know, another way to do it that you like better or maybe it even works better. See now, everything is supported. You've got a little tray there, but we're not done yet. But you've got a tray holding the pump, holding the bottle, everything in place. Now we need to make holes, big holes. We won't need a soldering iron, but if you wanna use it, that's fine. I think this works better. We're gonna cut about three long, narrow slits here. So when that water bubbles, that bubbler comes up and throws that water to the top, it's gonna to be so cute. You wanna make sure it goes back into the container fast. If it doesn't go back fast, it's gonna end up everywhere else and you want it to go back as fast as possible and no leaks on the outside. And let me tell you something, this works. So make three long, narrow slits. You wanna do four, you wanna do five, that's up to you. But I'm gonna do three here, it seems to work. And just make the slit so as fast as the water is bubbling out of your water bottle, it will return back to your vessel, no matter what vessel you use. And this way nothing overflows and it will run all day. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Now. It's gonna hold it and the water will be coming up later when you put it all together and it will go right back. That straw is gonna to need to be trimmed. We'll do that pretty soon. That's all there is to it. Now we're gonna trim our straw. Remember, you can get a whole bag of them for like two bucks. Look around, they're the large jumbo straws. They're made for some drink that's with tapioca, so they're real big. But you can use tubing, you go to the hardware store and buy it. Now this particular pump, it doesn't fit on, it's too small. So the nozzle from the pump is small, so we gotta build it up so the straw stays on. Now sometimes cutting the straw, because we're cutting it down, and I put a slit, see how the slit is there? We're gonna slide that over the nozzle. Sometimes one works. It will depend on the size of the attachment to your solar pump. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. So this one, I can see one slit's not gonna work. We're gonna need two pieces of straw. And thank goodness, I'm still gonna only use one straw because I still have to cut it down shorter. So I'm gonna cut another piece off as soon as I figure out about how much more to take off. And then I'm gonna have two I'm gonna slide on. So here I'm cutting the straw again, and they don't have to be the same size. I'm making another slit all the way up, all the way up, you're gonna cut it. Now you're gonna slip one on, and then you're going to slip the other one on top of it. Now with that piece, you can leave it on the pump as you're working or take it off. Now I took it off. Now there's one piece I put on, and now I'm putting the other piece of straw that I slit all the way up. Now it should be thick enough, let's see, to get this on, yep. Oh, look how nice and tight that is. It is really holding that in place. And now you just can put it back on. But see how it goes? You're gonna put the pump in, and then you're gonna slide the bottle, the top of the bottle, in through the top there, see? You can drop it in and you're gonna gently kind of push it back on. But you can do that at any time when you're ready to set it up because I can see we still have to trim that straw a little bit. We don't want it shooting up. We want this a bubbler, not a sprayer. Especially if we're trying to get hummingbirds, they want a gentle flow. 
So we're going to trim that straw more. The lower the straw, the slower the flow. If you have a closer to the top, it will spray above the water and you'll have it shooting up in the air. And that's not what we're trying to do here. Now I've got it nice and short. Now we put it back on and you'll see we're going to slip on the top of the water bottle that we cut right there. And look at that. Perfect. One other thing. I'm going to put a notch there. By notching it, your wire won't be flopping around. So we're going to take a scissors, no soldering iron, and we're just going to cut a notch. Because remember, we're working with food containers that are just a softer plastic. And it's much easier to work with. So all we're needing here is the scissors. We're just going to take a little B out. So it's that simple. Just kind of cut down, take out a piece of plastic, and look how nice it's going to sit in there. See, now when you drop the lid on, it will be flat. So it's not going to be like lifted up a little bit. We're basically all done. We could be done right now. We don't have to do anything else, but of course I have something else I want to do and that will be totally up to you. Now remember, as I said, you could use a little bucket, a trash can, anything else, but you know me, I get all that tester paint. They're 50 cents at Home Depot. I think Lowe's has it for a dollar and you can't get any cheaper than that. What I ended up doing was painting it. It's on the outside. The paint here in California is non-toxic anyways, but again, it's just on the outside. I painted it yellow. Now, what I'm going to do is decoupage it. Now, the decoupage or the Mod Podge I use is dishwasher safe. The reason I only use that one is if you read the outdoor one, it says it's not waterproof. I don't know why but it's not waterproof. But dishwasher safe, that should be really waterproof. So that's the one I use. Now what I did was I took an old seed catalog and I trimmed out some roses and well, the roses didn't have leaves, but they were selling other green plants with leaves. It's good enough. And all I did was quickly put my decoupage on there and put it on and make sure you let it dry overnight. And you should put two or three coats on. That would be the best thing. And doesn't it really pretty up the whole thing and make it look nicer? But again, that's totally up to you. Okay, I have one more thing I'm going to do. I promise this is the last thing. And it's up to you. It's not really sharp when you cut it, but it seems a little rough to me. You could use a glue gun and go all around the edge. But my choice on this is puffy paint. This is puffy fabric paint. It's non-toxic, it's plastic, and it's not going to wash off. I love using this stuff, and they're cheap. They're like a dollar a bottle, and it's going to last you a long time. And you just kind of kind of go all around the edge. It doesn't have to look that pretty. It's going to be a little perch is what it is for a hummingbird. And they can stand on that, and that's it. Now let it dry overnight, and you will be good to go. And then we're going to go get this thing set up. Now, wasn't this easy? Okay, now we have it outside. Look at it. Just like we put it together, we're going to put on the top. See the slits there? Now we're going to fill it with cool tap water. If you can drink your water, they can take a bath in it. And that's it. Look at that. We have a bubbler, not a sprayer, a bubbler. But I'm not quite done yet. You know me. I always have something else. What I like adding on are some glass marbles or stones you can get from the dollar stores. They've got them. A dollar a bag. It's up to you or go collect some rocks around your place, wash them up, and put them in there. Look at that. It gives it a little more look and a little weight to it if you want. And if it's really hot, go ahead and add a couple ice cubes in there. Let me tell you something. The birds will appreciate some cool water for the day. Snap it back on and then just set it up. And now you see all the water returning through the slits we made. And that is it. We recycled some food containers and a water bottle. You can't get easier than that. You can use any container you want. Isn't that adorable? So I hope you enjoyed all these tips and tricks on making this fun fountain out of a water bottle. Leave your questions and comments. Tell me what you think. And with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow and make something for the birds. Doesn't have to be just hummingbirds. All the birds enjoy this. Bye-bye.